Hi everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate a new feature uh, for adding an attribute table to a map document that was introduced in our simple GIS client 10.1.1 release. I think this will be a really neat feature and allows you to convey a lot more information on your maps. And so uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I have a project file that I've created here. And in this project file, I have a feature layer loaded uh, for zip code tabulation areas. And this is just a polygon boundary feature layer um, of the zip code tabulation areas as defined by the U.S. Census Bureau. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I want you to imagine if this was, for instance, I met perhaps property tracks uh, that had different owners. And in this case, I've gone in and I've added the derived geometry field and if I look at the attribute table for this feature layer, I see that I do have this perimeter uh, that's measured in miles uh, field and I also have an area field measured in acres. So uh, there is another video tutorial if you want to find out how I added these derived geometry fields. It's very easy and uh, there is another video tutorial for that. So let's go ahead and let's say I'm going to create a map document. So I'm going to locate my Publish Map tool all the way to the far right of my toolbar. And it's going to open up my Map Template dialog box. And so I'm going to select this first map template, which is just a very basic uh, portrait orientation on just a letter size sheet of paper. And so I'll go ahead and select that and click Apply. And I see that it is generated a new map document. And I have a single viewport on here uh, showing the zip code tabulation boundaries. And uh, so essentially, if these were property tracks, I'm going to go to uh, my set of tools. It's the second set of tools on the bottom row from the right. And if I click on the drop down, arrow you'll see that I have the add viewport legend etc and if I go all the way to the bottom I have a tool called add table to map and as I select that tool I'm simply going to click and drag to draw a rectangle on my map and as I release I see that I get a new dialog box for me to configure my table so to begin with I need to select a viewport uh, to be able to choose the layer that uh, I want to get the attribute data for. And in this case, since I only have a single viewport on the map, that's pretty simple. Just select that one viewport. And now I need to select the feature layer, whose attribute table that I want to base my map on. So as I select the viewport, if I click on this drop down, I see all the feature layers in that viewport. And as I select my feature layer, I see that my list of fields are populated here and if you notice the format of this it is in the format I have the physical field name and then I have a pipe character and then I have a second label following that the first label again is the physical field name in the attribute table the second label after the pipe character is the field alias which is actually what my column names will be in my table and I can actually change those aliases by simply double clicking on a field and I get a dialog box that pops up and I just type in the alias that I want for that field or column. And so now I've changed that to name so that will be the column header in my table. Also notice that I have a series of check boxes by each field. Uh, only the fields with a check will be included in my table. So if there are fields that I don't want to include in my table, I simply uncheck those fields. So I also see now I have my geometry fields here, and I'm going to change the field aliases on these as well to make them a little more descriptive. Even put uh, what the units of measure are in my column name so that it's obvious. And so now that I have them, I can also uh, select fields how I want to sort the field. So if I wanted to sort on name, for instance, I simply select the field. And I can either choose to sort ascending or descending by clicking on the appropriate button. 
and I see that it gets added over here to my sorted fields and this symbol indicates the direction of the sort. And I can also change the order of my fields in my table. So if I wanted a certain order, I could simply uh, select a field by clicking on it and then dragging it to the location or position that I want that field to appear in my column. So if I want a perimeter to be in the first column, I just simply drag it up to the top. In this case, I don't want, I want name to actually be first, so I'll drag it back below the name field. By default, the records that will appear in my table are only those features that are visible in the viewport that my table is linked to. So only the uh, zip code tabulation areas or if this was property tracks, only those tracks that was visible in my map would appear in my table. If I wanted to further limit the records that are visible in my table, I could actually enter an expression here that would act as a filter, a secondary filter that would then further filter out the records that would appear in the table. So I simply enter the expression at this point close and I see it as the expression here in the expression uh, box. For this particular demonstration I don't want to to filter any further so I'm just going to clear that expression. I can just simply click on the clear expression button to remove it. The next thing I need to do is format the appearance of my table. So the first thing is the table header uh, formatting which this is like the uh, the header for the columns so I can change the um, actual cell background color and border and as well as the font. So I'm going to leave the uh, cell itself as it is, but I do want to change my header font symbol. So I just simply double click on it and it brings up my symbol palette. And in this case, I'm going to choose one of the existing symbols. I'm just going to make it bold. So I've now changed the font that will be used for my column headers. And then I also need to format uh, the cells and font for my data rows. In this case, I do want to change the frame for my uh, data cells. So I'm going to change it from that yellow background to a white background just with a black border. So I'm going to select the appropriate symbol, click apply, and I'll leave the data font as is. I can also specify an exact position for my table by specifying the left and top uh, coordinate for the top left corner of the table and page units as well as the width and height of the table. Uh, for this demonstration I'm going to leave it as is. So now as I click apply I'll see that I now have a table added to my map with all of the records that's visible in the current viewport. I'm just going to zoom in on the page to make it a little bit clearer so you can see that indeed uh, the columns that it's added I have a name and it's sorted in ascending order on the name. I have a perimeter column which is the perimeter measurement in miles as well as an area column that specifies the acreage for each of these polygon features. So you can imagine, so for instance, again, if this was land tracks or what have you with property owners, I could display uh, some specific information about the property uh, right on my map for output. And if you notice, if I was to uh, turn on my viewport navigation and then go to my pan view and pan and to change the view within my viewport, the records displayed in my table would change accordingly. Uh, to only show those records visible. So if I zoom back out again so I can see my map page and I see all of these records. If I turn on my viewport navigation again and if I was to zoom in to a larger scale I would see now that I have uh, many fewer records of visible within my table. Again, because it's only displaying the records for those features that are visible within my uh, within the viewport that my table is linked to.
Also notice my table fills up the area I define uh, for the table by whatever is the most constraining, whether it's the width or height. If I wanted to resize my table, I could use my Select Graphics tool, which is this tool with the red arrow on it. And as I click on the table, I see that it actually selected my viewport as well as the table object since they are laid on top of each other. So you just have to be careful if you go to resize your table. So I could select one of these black handles uh, to resize my table. And as I do, I see that it scales the table accordingly. But you just have to be careful um, that you don't accidentally grab your viewport or you could accidentally move it or resize it. So as you can see here, if I accidentally clicked a little off to the side and, and was to drag, I would actually move my entire viewport object and not the table. So I could reset its position. I would simply have to double click on the viewport if I did accidentally move it and I could change again under the position area. Just change the left and top position to put it back to its original location. And I can click in my table and drag to move it. If I double click on the table, I can see I can actually bring up my table properties. So for instance, if I didn't want to see perimeter, I just uncheck that field. And now I see that I only have two columns in my table, the name and the area columns. So at this point, I'm going to show you another example. This is another project I created and it's based upon, I see I have this uh, stamen terrain tile maps loaded as my uh, base map and I've actually imported some waypoints from a sample GPX file and those are shown with these red markers and I just went through the GPS routing import GPX file tool to import uh, the waypoints from that GPX file as a new shape file into my map and on this particular shape file, I went ahead and again it has several fields but I've added the derived geometry fields on this table as well and if I scroll over what I've added is the uh, since this is a point feature the derived geometry field is essentially just the X and Y coordinate for the point feature and in my case, I specified the units for the point feature as decimal degrees because I wanted to actually get the X and Y coordinate as a latitude longitude coordinate. And the reason being, if I look, uh, because I have my uh, base map loaded, it's in Web Mercator uh, map projection. Uh, and I want to use that map projection for my actual map because it just makes a nice looking map. But yet, I want to display information about these waypoints, and I want to display the coordinate information in latitude, longitude. And so, hence, that's why when I added the derived geometry field, I made sure to select to uh, add it in decimal degrees. So I'm going to go, as before, I'm going to create a new map document by going to the Publish Map. And when I bring up the map template dialog box again, I'm just going to select this first map template. Just a very simple map. And I see that I, it's been created and I have the single viewport on my sheet of paper. And once again, I'm going to go and select the Add Table to Map tool. And I will once again click and drag draw a rectangle and when I release I get my map table properties so I select my viewport and my feature layer and then I see all of these list of fields that I can add into my table or include in my table so in this case I'm going to uncheck I don't need that FID I do want to keep elevation although I want to change the uh, column name for this. Um, I'm going to double click and change the alias to ele elevation. And then I'm going to keep name and I'm just going to correct and add a capitalization for the field alias. And I want name to appear before elevation. So I'm going to drag it 
up in the list and then I want to sort on name as well in ascending order. Uh, I want to keep description as well, but I want to change the alias for it. Um, I don't need symbol or type. And then I want to keep the longitude latitude, but again, I want to make the column heading more descriptive, so I'm going to change the field alias on these fields as well. And again, I need to format my table appearance. I'm going to keep uh, my header cell the same, but I'm going to make my header font bold. And then for my data row, as I did before, I'm just going to change its symbol to a white background with black border. And now I see that I have added the table to my map. Make sure my viewport navigation is turned off so I can zoom in on my sheet not actually within the viewport. And I can see that my table is wide and it's primarily due because there's one record that has a very long description in it. So to fit that description, it had to scale the table such so that if I'm zoomed out to the entire page, I see that it's a pretty small font. I'll just reposition my page here. Again, if I use my select graphics tool, click on the table, and then I can change the width of the table by simply clicking within this black handle and dragging it to the right. As I do, I see that it does scale the table to fill uh, the width in this case, since that's the most constrictive uh, element. But again, if I turn my viewport navigation on and pan and zoom, I see that it changes the output in my table because of the features that's visible in the viewport. In this case, I see that it has scaled everything up because uh, the feature that had the long description is no longer visible in my view, so my, all of my descriptions are much shorter in this case. So this concludes the demonstration. Um, hopefully you can see that this could be a useful tool to help you convey more information on your maps. And as always, if you haven't done so, I just encourage you to download the free trial. It's located on the website at www.simplegissoftware.com.